This is chapter 8.5, The Law of Signs. And, well, we need to first know how to mark a triangle properly in order to use this procedure. Well, all the vertices, as we already know, on a triangle, the corner points, are always in capital letters. And in the Law of Signs, we are then going to designate the same thing, the vertices, each vertex is a capital letter, and then see how this letter is a capital A, follow it across, we're going to use a lowercase a to indicate the length of the side opposing that vertex. And likewise go up to capital B and follow it across, then this side is side lowercase b, and for capital C, this vertex followed across this side, the length of it is lowercase c. And so we can see that the opposing sides correspond to each vertex. The law of sines state that if we have the sine of this angle A, capital A, divided by the opposing side that corresponds to it with a lowercase a. So sine capital A divided by length lowercase a is equal to proportional to sine the sine of angle B which is in a capital letter divided by the corresponding side across from it opposing it lowercase b so and the same thing for the C so sine a divided by a sine b divided by b is equal to sine C divided by C and likewise, we could write the reciprocals and flip every one of these fractions as long as we flip them all. So A divided by sine A is equal to B divided by sine B, and C is equal to C divided by sine C. Okay. So then we're going to do an example now. Now I gave you an information of an angle and an angle and a side. And let's see if this works. Well, first off, when we try to solve one of these, you want to try to puzzle out, fill in the law of signs with as much information as you can try to you know, figure out from the picture. So if we have two angles here, we can clearly find out that this missing angle here is 37 degrees, right? 95 and 48 and 37 add up to 180. Okay, so then take all of this information in the picture and plug it in the appropriate places. So since you have angle A is 37 degrees, then we can write sine of 37 degrees on the top is of this fraction is divided by the opposing side of 16 length. We have sine of B, which is sine of 95 degrees, divided by we don't know what B is yet. Let me label that appropriately. And C, I have to work a little bit to get that color marker. Uh, so let's see, we got sine of C, so it's sine of 48 is divided by the length C. So in this image, we really just have two unknown sides. Okay, and so I filled in that information here, and then I looked on the, the trig tables that I handed out to the class and found out that the sine of 37 degrees is 0 0.6. 018, and the sine of 95 degrees is 0.9962, and the sine of 48 degrees is 0.7431. So I filled all that into these fractions. Now, you know, so everything's there. We just have two unknowns. Now, we're going to flip these because if you take the reciprocal of everything, see now I just flipped all the var unknown variables up into the top of each fraction. That makes it easier to solve. And then we can solve it one time here, so this is solving for B, and then you can so then after we're done doing that, then we can take um, this one and this one, set them equal to each other, and solve for C. So we're going to flip the page and see that's what I did. See, I wrote the same fraction. This was the length of little lowercase a divided by the sine of capital A is approximately equal to, approximate because we looked it up on a table, these proportions, and then I simplified this to a single decimal value, and then the next thing was is I took this fraction and set it equal to it, well approximately equal to it, and the same thing with this one over here with the letter C, and set it approximately equal to that same value, because they're all proportional, they are all equal to the same thing. And then if you multiply both sides of this 
equation by 0.9962, you get this answer. And for C here, if we multiply both sides by 0.7431, then you get this answer here, where C is 19.757. Uh, okay, that one's done. This next one's a little more complicated because, well, now we have two sides and an angle, so it's not easy to just subtract the interior angles from 180 and find out the missing angle because there's two missing angles. So let's move forward here. So if we have the law of sines, which I wrote, and then fill in what you can. So I wrote sine of A without a value because I don't know the measure of that angle is divided by this side here, 12. Then I have the sine of B, which is 110 degrees, divided by the opposing side, 16. And that is where you should be smiling when we're doing this math, because right here we have a fraction where we know what decimal value it's going to be. We can work this out and get an answer. And so then the next thing is you can identify what you can solve for. Well, if if you can get a decimal value for this, and you've got this bottom part of this fraction, well, that means we can solve for angle A, because we only have one unknown. See, over here, this is going to be a problem with the C stuff, because it's two unknowns. So just focus on this right here. OK, we'll flip the page. So I copied everything from the previous page. And then I put in the trig value for sine of 110 degrees and simplified this so I have this decimal value. So set this equal to that approximation, which I did. And when you multiply both sides by 12, you get this value. And then this is going to require us to use the inverse of the sine function, because this is the ratio of the two sides, and we need the angle. So then you backtrack that off your table. You look down the sine column to find roughly that decimal, and then look over to the left and find the degree. I happen to use a calculator, so I have a decimal value for that um, for that degree. So the measure of angle A is 44.8. And once you know that A is 44.8, great handwriting, Pete, then, um, well, then now you can take 110 into 44.8 and subtract it from 180 and find out that the missing angle for angle C is 25.2 degrees. And see, if we go back a page, See if we can fill in right there the 25.2, then right there, then we're good to go because then we will only have one unknown, the length of that side. So let's flip over a couple of frames. There we go, that's what I'm doing. So I put that value in there, and see we already know this, we already did this work before. I looked up on the trig table that uh, sine of 25.2. Actually, I punched it in my calculator. I got 0.4258, and then I solve for C. That's it. That's the law of sines. Thank you for watching this video.